Welcome to the Cotto Show. We are sort of live from the FSC JC Studio of Excellence. We've got a great show for you today. We have Brie Oki, Michael Liss, and Caitlin Benoit. <laughs> We've got a good looking group for you guys today. I'm going to ask you guys to stand up, move over here. We're going to start off with our scenes from a mug. Only slightly stolen from hit improv comedy TV show. Whose line is it anyway? I'm going to ask you guys to step off and... The way this works is I read a, a sort of a scene and you'll come up on the stage, you'll perform a line, you'll perform a little word, and we'll see how it goes. First off, we have things you can say about your favorite mu musical artist, but not your significant other. See, here's the thing. I really like what they're doing there, but also kind of terrible. Mm -mm. <laughs> Recently, a uh, recent single, incredible. <laughs> All right, next we've got, if human doctors acted like animal doctors. Oh, it's been such a good boy. You did such a good job. Oh, you're so cute. Aw. Shh. Calm down. Shh. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna insert the thermometer into the anal gland. <laughs> Brutal. All right, we've got, if actors were honest during acceptance speeches. There is not a single cast member that I actually enjoyed being around. Thank you. <laughs> See, truthfully speaking, I didn't do any of the real work here. Next we've got novelty tours at the mall that went out of business strangely quickly. See, you'd think that a store for used socks would be a great idea. However, we were starting to run low. Probably smells really bad too. Next up, we've got rejected show names for the Cotto show. James Simpson's fever dream. Oh. <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm gonna ask you guys to come sit down for me. That was scenes from a mug. <laughs> All right, next up. Next up, we've got Would I Lie to You? We're going to start with Bree. She's going to read us a little story from her note card, and it will be up to our, ta our other participants to ask her questions and t determine if that is a true story or a totally lie. Okay, so when I was about 15 months old, I got out of my crib, and I was like, let's take a little adventure because, you know, my parents are asleep, and I was just, I was just bored, you know, so... I um, got out, went to the top of my staircase because I uh, didn't really know what else to do. And, uh, you know, I live in a house that's three stories, hardwood flooring. And I took a little tumble down like 15 staircases and dropped on the tile floor. And uh, I'm still here, so. 15 staircases? <laughs> like Plural? the stairs, yes. <laughs> multiple? Like multiple stairs, just like stairs. Like 15 stairs, like okay. on a case, you know. On a case. On a case. All right. Didn't yes. know we're talking stair lingo now. Yes. Did you get hurt? Um, no. I just, you know, walked around after her and I was fine. And you were 15 months old? Yes. Uh, can 15 months old, like, can they walk? They were, I was, like, walking, crawling. Yeah. I don't think I know what babies do, but okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, were, like, were there like literally any parents nearby or was it just, just you going wild? Free range? My, yeah, my, my mom and my dad were free just range. asleep and uh, yeah. Free range, brioche? Question yeah, pretty, pretty much free range, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm feeling a little sussed out. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know no. if I believe that. You don't think Brie fell down the stairs at 15 I months old I believe that Brie would fall down. However, <laughs> I feel like it's a little, the age line doesn't line up yeah. to that. That and also I feel like she would have gotten at least a little bit more than just, oh yeah, no, just. I was fine. 
Yeah, she would have gotten bumped and bruised a little it bit. It does yeah, track that Bree would, would fall, yeah, though. Yeah, you would Bree would fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah I would. I would like, fall. Why does it sound like you're getting, we're convincing you that your story Yeah, you're like, yeah, no, this is true. This is accurate. No, All right, Brie, is that a true story? It was true. <laughs> <laughs> she survived, not a scratch. Survived. I'm not sure how she remembered it, though, Yeah. At 15 months old. My parents would always remind me of the oh, story. Oh, they're like, oh, oh remember yeah, that same time? Same yeah, same that's, story. that's why I'm like this. Morning. All right, Honestly, interesting. Same. We start off with the true one. Micah, could we hear your story now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, so this one. Uh, so my family is very odd. Uh, so when I was first born, uh, and I came home from the hospital, the immediate thing that my father decided to do was to take little little baby Micah and take a pickle sphere, a uh, uh, pickle uh, spear, that's the word, and just kind of, rather than, you know, waiting until I'm like, actually have, I actually have teeth, he decided that my first solid food ever would be to just gnaw on a pickle spear. Day one. Day one. Uh, first day home from the hospital. Crazy oh. things happen in Wisconsin. Yeah. If I were Micah's dad, I would have chewed up the pickle spear and then spit it into like his mouth. Like a bird? So that he could, so that he, yeah, like a bird. That is a terrible mental image. <laughs> well, I mean, it's better than pickle spear. Like, come on. Well, I was just gnawing on it. Gumming, gumming on it, not gnawing, gumming. You didn't have teeth. What? You, That's why I said I was gumming on it. You were but a small little baby. Yeah. Was it not acidic? Um. I don't know. I was like three days old. Yeah, I was gonna say it's worth considering that Micah so, was less yeah. than a year old. So your dad just whips, whips out a little gherkin, and goes, "Hey, my little baby infant, let me just give him a pickle." Yeah. What's a gherkin? A what is a gherkin? A what? A pickle. <laughs> it's, it's a, a, type, a, of a pickle. type of little, the little, the little cute, the little cucumbers, the little. A little the, cucumber. That's what pickles are. No, I know. But they, it's that's what they they're called gherkins. I've oh. never heard it's that. It's the little tiny Gherkin? pickles. It's a little tiny pickle. Oh, You're okay. from up north. You should know this. Upstate you New York. I've never heard that. I live in I live in the Adirondacks. Oh, okay, so I live in Booney Land. Anyway. So, <laughs> do we think this story is true? Do we think Micah's dad fed him a pickle at day on day one? You know, it tracks. I feel like it yeah, tracks. Yeah. No, I could see that from Wisconsin. Micah's had a childhood. Yeah. I could. I could. <laughs> I could, I could it, it is true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Father of the year. Father of the year. Four. At least you came yeah, into the world with something there tasty. All right. <laughs> Kaylin, let's hear your story. All righty. So, in my family, three days before Christmas, uh, so we celebrate a holiday where we put gifts under an old aluminum pole and then we compete with feats of strength for said gifts. Hmm? That was. <laughs> That was really simplified. I mean, listen, okay, listen. The way that I put the, uh, or the way this is written down is very interesting. So essentially, we have an aluminum pole, and then we just compete for the gifts underneath them, under the pole. What do you mean, like feats of strength? See, that's for you to figure out. Uh, no, I think that's for you to tell. Well, listen, us. okay, my family's very strange. Uh, we're not going to question it. So feats of strength kind of determines on different things, like you know, wrestling, running around the lake. This is up in Mass because we had lakes back mm -hmm. then. Now in Florida, we don't know what we're gonna do this year. But you know, we have this pole, and the uh, uh, you know the Christmas tree. W was the pole inside or outside? See, that is the question. It was actually outside. So you know those like the ball pole thingies that like with the ball that swings around and then, like hits you in the face if you swing it too tether much. Ball pole? Yeah, that's what it is. We had a tether ball pole in the backyard, um, and so this is the thing we put the gifts underneath. I fell a lot in the snow in Massachusetts. Yeah, that's the reason that it was difficult. <laughs> How did you like not get like frostbite or something? <laughs> Listen, we, we don't question these things. I probably did, oh. most likely. But you know, it's Massachusetts, so it wa it works. I feel like this is like really false. <laughs> uh huh. So you, you guys don't you don't think that they competed in feats of strength on I, December twenty second? I mean, like I could see that, but December twenty second is very specific. Yeah. Well, no, we can't do it on Christmas. I know, but also they celebrate like, Christmas on Christmas. Yeah, Christmas yeah, is for like, Christmas times, but the feats What of, did you call see, this so holiday? Like we called it Feats of Strength. It was but really it's lame. Just like, okay. <laughs> I don't Listen, know. okay, it's you had to you had to qualify for your presents. If you didn't do it beforehand, then you were stuck. And so you think you don't think this is true? No. No. Mm -mm. Is this true, Caitlin? This is not true. <laughs> what does this mean? No, that's actually the plot of a Seinfeld episode where they <laughs> Wait a minute. They celebrate Festivus. Slay. So yeah, they, they grease the pole. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And so that was Would I Lie to You? And we're going to next I move would. on to our next thing. Okay. <laughs> next
We have a game called Seeing the Music. I'm going to ask you guys to stand up, move over to our second performance space. This game is pretty simple. They're going to be doing a classic improv scene. And what they will do, they will be doing their scene and the music will turn on. The music will determine how they act, how they perform for the rest of the scene. It might cut out, in which case they'll go back to their normal voices. And your suggestion for your scene is, oh, this office job just got a lot more interesting whenever you guys are ready. All right. So um, I've, I've called you in here today because I have some news about how the office is going to be changing. Um, so uh, as you know, We've had a lot of very uh, interesting involvements recently. Is that so? Um, you know, we've had some, our main client. Uh, and our client has sort of requested that we switch things up. Um, makes sense, makes sense. Yes, so to start with, I hate to break it to you, we aren't allowed to use desks anymore. We can't, what do you mean we can't Wait. use desks? Desks? Desks, they can be used for so many things. <laughs> It's loud. But it's forbidden. <laughs> this can't possibly be. <laughs> a desk? Bring them back! <laughs> we can't do it. I'm sorry. It's well, just, it's apparently, we're, it's just against company policy now. It isn't even my but choice. It's a desk, it's so it doesn't make any sense. Why? We need it to write on. Yeah. This. I it, need to do my papers. More budget cuts? Are you serious, it's, John? It's, really? It's above me. I'm sorry. I can't do Aren't anything about it. Are you the president about of this company? You would think so. You certainly would think so. It's, you know, aren't you really concerned? I think something? there are more things that we should be concerned about, and this is not one of them. Yeah. You see, I think, I think you should you see with some dough. Some some more dough. I some agree. Dough. Some cash money. There's Voila. other ways people yeah. can be convinced. Yeah. Listen. There, the secret is is that I, I'm essentially the face of the company. I don't really do a whole lot of the behind the scenes work. It's kind of really just they, they just tell me what to do and then I do it and Listen, it's, really, it's a really stressful job, honestly, because I, I, I just be, take all the blame. I may be a small intern here, but I think that I need a desk to write my papers on. It's kind of important considering we are a paper manufacturing company. Yeah. Seems a little difficult. Yeah, just a, just Can't a you like get them to cut something else? Like, I don't know, the massive box of chocolates in the room? You know, I'm not really supposed to say this, but like, with me being the whole front man, there's a reason that I'm a front man. There's a, there's a bit of behind the scenes work happening. Behind the scenes in what way? Well, you think that we're manufacturing paper. That isn't all that we're manufacturing. We're also manufacturing complete crime. <laughs> all right, that's enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Complete crime. I have some questions about this company. I, I'd love to hear more in, in, at a later time. I was really interested Crimes to see and crayons. What, what Kaylin had. Where are you guys going? Do you, ah! I don't know. I was just following we her. Didn't, we didn't follow the right, leader. This next game is called Sound Effects. We're going to have our audience member come up. Her name is Julia. It was very nice to meet her, and she is very good at making sound effects. It's pretty simple. They're doing a standard improv scene, and whatever sound effects Julia makes become canon. Pretty easy, you'll get the hang of it. And your suggestion is, two people show up for an audition, but they aren't quite sure what the role is. Whenever you guys are ready. Let's, let's, let's fix it. Let's. I'll guess. Hey, uh, so I have my resume, I have my headshot. Do you okay, know where okay. I'm supposed to be? Going? Sorry, sorry, we have, a, we have a, a studio ghost. Just don't worry about a it. A studio ghost? Uh, yeah, no, the place is a little bit haunted. It's, <laughs> Are we in an atrium? Yeah, wait, is this a part of the, the uh, like audition? Like, what what is this play? Even I, a, like, what is it about? Okay, let, I there's a reason I called you like over to the zoo. It's like wrong way. <laughs> Listen, I I know that you're you have to do construction, but can you just keep it down a little? I I thought this was an open call for the new. Why are we at a farm? I, it it has what? to do with the production. I swear. Listen, I know that it seems a little bit weird, Great but googly moogly. It's the ghost again. Listen, <laughs> um, so is this ghost gonna get me hired? Because my, my manager sent me to this like five minutes ago. I, I have places I need to... Is somebody dying? Is that a cat? I, the ghost is a cat. Wait, I see it. Do you see it? Screw the audition, it's screw the audition. The, it's a cat. It's underneath the ladder. Oh my God, Gilbert. No, it's underneath the ladder, get away. <laughs> Listen, listen, okay. I'm I, very I, I, don't think, I don't think this is a good idea. Listen, <laughs> maybe this is a bad thing. I, I don't think... <laughs> oh, the band is here. The band, but I what I, band? I thought this was a straight play. I I don't have a musical bone in my Make body. Way I don't. For the queen. 
Oh, 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 yeah, no, um, Lizzie's back. It's the Queen ghost Elizabeth. of Queen Lizzie. Lizzie's oh, back. Oh. Lizzie's back. Um, I, okay. <laughs> when my manager ghost, sent me this. The ghost is Queen Elizabeth. Is it her? Is it her? Is it really her? Is, is it Queen, Queen Elizabeth? Elizabeth going to be in this film? Yes. Because I can't work with her. Listen. Listen, we, we've had some things in the past. Elizabeth and I don't work well together. You, you know what happened back in 95, right? Yeah. I can't work with Wait, under wait, these your resume. Your, your, your resume's. Is that Sharpay? <laughs> and that scene, I've seen enough. <laughs> Sharpay. Ha, ha, ha. This has been The Cotto Show, the only show that if you close your eyes and dream really hard happens, hard happens in the metaverse. We've had Brioki, Kaylin, and Micah. It's been a great show. Thank you so much for tuning in.